Yeah. Welcome to the push. You gotta uh, move that. Man. We got some technical issues already. We are up to episode 26, not 27 like we thought it was. Yeah, we've right. done bodyboards so we can't count. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised if we can't pass 15, Steve. <laughs> um, we, today, this week, we've got an amazing guest, Riri. Hi. Who's in the yes. house. Um, and her Instagram is at the underscore Valkyrie. Valkyrie, R H I, guys. Yes. R H. Oh, um, I just realised that. So yeah, that's my actually, name. So, oh, it's, so usually the Valkyrie is um, V A L K Y R I E. Yes. But I put it Valkyrie. Oh, I just yeah, you just switched that shit up. Did you ever realise that? I never fucking knew that. Oh, you knew that? Of course I did. I just I just realised that even when I wrote it, I didn't realise. So there you, well, go. you know now. You know now. There's a fun fact. So you're actually today. you're actually you are a dumb bodybuilder, right? Yeah. <laughs> Clearly. That's fine. Forgive me. Um, so welcome. Thank you. Yes. Thanks for inviting me. We have little Ace again in the house. Ace six months next week. Hey. He seems pretty. He's pretty chuffed. Yeah, he's a good kid, man. He's, he's very chill. <laughs> Who's that funny lady? She doesn't know who I am. That's right. So um, That's before we get through all, all the, uh, we actually were trying to get you on for a little while. We yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. yeah. And um, we were going to be busy. We need to cancel today, didn't we, Kev? Yeah. But we're here. We made I, it. Uh, mm-hmm. I had some domestic abuse issues. No, 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 no domestic abuse. Just domestic, um, domestic. Activity, okay. Well, not activity, not that, <laughs> not that, not okay. that unfortunately. No. Just uh, some stuff came up, and I didn't think I'd be able to make it. Okay, so. but you're here, but I'm here, and you're amazing. Here. We're all here. And look at the size of you, look at these oh, traps. Just do by suppose, do by suppose. Don't lie, hey, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> great. Right. Um, um, but I, yeah, I, I am happy that I've kept this size because I am probably been natural for about I'd say 10. 10 months, which is like pretty good. That's great. I've managed to maintain a lot of science and yeah. I'm pretty mindful about my food. Um, well, let's start, yeah. let's start with yeah. that. It's, it's, a, it's yeah. been a big journey. Yeah, so, it has. Yeah. And, and you, you look great. Thank you. And um, it's obviously. You know what? My outside is actually a reflection of how I feel on the inside. Okay. You so know, you're feeling, you're feeling good at the moment? Yeah, feel like I a feel beast um, on the outside? I'm getting there. Yeah, of course I do. But it's, it's been. It's been. Um, a really unusual journey for me so yes yes it has been how you know which obviously we'll talk about yeah. um which i'm happy to to share it with everyone so. okay so um your background where, where are you actually were you from sydney okay so no i'm from Ulladulla originally okay. so i'm a south coast girl so, so I'm a country, country girl. girl let's see it um but i was raised in a family that didn't have much money so um i'm the youngest of seven um wow, so. yeah so i have three related and then the other four are not blood. So right. my family took in another family um, when they were younger, and we all just call each other family. We're not obviously blood. Just the kids, or with two parents like so mum and together. dad. So there's so there's me, my twin brother Harley, uh, my sister Neil. Yeah, so yeah, cool. Twin. Yeah. Does he train? No, he's so he's you know what he's six foot four. Like I'm about I don't know what six like what do you mean five eight for me. Yeah, I'm, pretty, I'm, pretty, I'm actually pretty short. People think that I'm really like taller for my mm. Instagram, but I'm not. Yeah, people think that of me as well. I, they're like, <laughs> oh, I've had so many people come up to me and they're like, you're actually really short in real life. So, yeah, I don't know if that's a compliment or I don't know. Everyone thinks Steve's six foot tall, don't they, Steve? That's uh, right. <laughs> um, but no, and then I've got Tamil, and then I've got Ben, and then we've got Melody, Kiana, Camilla, and Jade. Damn. So, Big family. yeah. Um, and you were saying earlier, your dad's um, indigenous? My dad's, yes, indigenous, so right. I'm Aboriginal. Um, so my dad's half, so his mother was um, white Australian. Right. And my dad actually has a pretty cool pretty cool story. So he was actually found by the Salvation Army. Found? Yeah. Wow, as yeah, a child? Yeah, as a child, yeah. Wow, yeah, like in, a, in a box on the In a rubbish bin, actually. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, so wow. my dad, like, <laughs> I don't like to say stolen generations, but the mother of my father knew that she was having an aboriginal child and back then it was very frowned upon so mm. and that's um a huge unraveling of past history for my dad too so wow. he struggles with that a lot and his yeah. identity and stuff like that so it is an ongoing thing people don't really realize how much it affects families um well you say you don't you don't want to say it's a stolen generation why is that if that, that's the sort of i suppose because he wasn't taken oh, away wasn't ta- okay. he wasn't taken he, right. he um he was yeah he wasn't displaced Right. But he was abandoned, was abandoned yeah. from birth because of the same because, racial issues. Because yes, exactly. Yeah, right. Right. So that then we've grown up not knowing my dad's side completely, and he's been denied of his um his history and, for a long time. 
presumably there's no white, no contact with his mum. No, 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 no. No, she passed obviously, oh, right. you know, years, years ago, and <coughs> a lot of a lot of information was lost in a house fire, and a lot of letters were written. And back in the day, that was sort of how the truths came out. You know, the letters yeah. would be written, and yeah. my dad's adopted family actually hid letters uh, that were given to him by his um, birth, birth mother. mother. Yeah, right. but knew that he was still alive uh, somehow. Okay. I don't know. It's pretty tricky. It's a pretty tricky story. My dad doesn't obviously like to go into it, but um. It interests me because it, it makes me understand who he yeah. is as a person. Yeah, so, yeah. And I, yeah. How are you? How how is your home life as a family? With I mean, we see here we're seeing Ace at six months, who's like surrounded by love and love and um, you know, he's got two parents that yeah. adore him. Um, Look, my mum and dad spent their last penny making sure that I was in every sport. Right. I used to play rugby league, rugby union, touch footy, netball. Surf life savings for me. I did it all. Really? So yeah. you're always a sporty chick? I've always been a sporty chick. Yeah, yeah. cool. I, um, I was actually on the sideline when my brother was playing rugby league when I was five. And I said to my mum, I want to do this. <laughs> That's cool. And then she's like, <clears throat> yeah, it's like just a phase. So she's like, you're going to play one game? Right. All right, and if you get hurt, then it's not my fault. This is what you want to do. And I was like, yeah, right. Sign me up. Right. Went on there and I scored like five like, awesome. school field tries. Seriously? Yeah, I was, I, 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 I was psycho. Yeah, loved it. This is before there was girls teams. Yeah, this like, was yeah. like when, so now <laughs> these days rugby league running is huge. Mm. But back then I used to play in the boys league yeah. and I had to play up until I was 13 and then I was told that um, I couldn't play anymore. Oh, wow. Because I'm a girl. So girls, well, yeah. obviously when we're developing, we can't play can't play with the boys because yeah. it's um it's too much contact yeah. and I was getting you know breasts and stuff yeah. then yeah. I was um yeah maturing a lot more so a distraction for the boys too I would probably imagine. yeah I had really long hair sometimes because I was I've, I've still been quite I've always been quite wide because I've been a swimmer so like I don't think some of them knew that I was a girl until they came up close they're like what because I had this like now, long were you, ponytail were you a star like <coughs> for those whole seven years you yeah played, I right? actually was on the footy show oh really? yeah oh, yeah oh, awesome. I was Mario's woman of the match. Okay. Yeah, they cool. came down and they did a story That's awesome. of me, yeah. Because <coughs> my dad actually sent in my footage of me playing. Right. Like, just on a whim. It's like, oh, yeah. How old were you then? Um, I would have been probably 11 or 12. Wow, that's so like, cool. Yeah. Do, running through the whole team scoring tries. That's yeah, yeah, cool. like all my footage, like all my highlights yeah, my dad yeah. sent in. Oh, this was on real. tape back in the day, too. Yeah. That's yeah. Um, And then, yeah, I got the call and, like, it was, I still remember it. It was one of the best moments of my life, I think. Oh, that's a shame that you were not able to pursue that if you were there. Yeah, it wasn't the cards I was dealt. So when I was 16, I had a, I was playing for Australia. Then I had a huge oh, big yeah. injury. Yeah. Hang on, you were playing for Australia? Yeah, I played for Australian women's team. At wow. 16? Yeah. The full women's team? Yeah. I was the youngest just, player. Just mention that nonchalantly. Like, you're just, just like, yeah. 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 yeah, a lot of people don't know because it's part of my past and this is how I got into the whole bodybuilding industry was because like I've always been used to doing team sport and right. then um obviously I had I had so I had this huge knee injury like my knee was dislocated uh, flipped around the other way this is when I was concussed in a tackle um and so again, surgery I didn't anything so I had yeah I have five surgeries on my knee now right so it's still never been the same since I had to give away my my dream yeah and then that's wow. when I pursued the bodybuilding um so presumably route. you were doing training. I'm, time I have never weights. been in a gym. Oh, I have no, never been in a gym. Wow. I stepped foot in the gym after my after my knee, and I was like, "Fuck, I don't know what I'm doing." To rehab here. it. To rehab so, it. Right. How yeah. old were you? Then? And I was self sixteen then. So all right. that yeah. skill and strength <coughs> you had on the field was just natural. I was really depressed because I was in a brace for six months. Oh no! no sorry, I'm just backing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You hadn't done any weight or strength. Oh no, 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 no. To, to no, it to was always success. like at, like it was more explosive, like anaerobic training, like sprints and stuff like yeah, that. Right. So it always been just like raw talent. anaerobic. Yeah, raw talent. That's where I'm yeah. getting. Yeah, thank <coughs> you. It's just it just I honestly had to just transfer one passion to the next to the next thing. because mm. I couldn't play. I couldn't change direction. My knee kept slipping out. Right. And I actually tried to return to touch footy on my birthday, and that was one no six months post surgery, my first surgery. Right. I lasted two minutes on the field. I went to go and touch someone and turn the other way, and then my knee dislocated oh. again. Oh. My physio was actually playing a game of touch at the time. We got him. He did the um, anterior draw test, and yeah, fair enough. I'd done it again. Then I went back from surgery again. Went and played for Helensburg Tigers. Of course he did. Got fucking caught in a tackle the wrong way. All it took was, and then I was out, and I hopped off the field, and that was a like, one year after the second surgery so i kept doing more rehab more rehab more rehab, trying to go back 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 but the universe was just right wasn't wasn't yeah. allowing me to, to yeah oh wow so, so yeah. you played for australia that's pretty yeah cool. that's pretty awesome. i played for act brumbies as well because i was in Ulladulla, so i was like on the cusp of the act 
Because Jervis Bay technically is actually classified as Victoria. Oh, right. If you don't know that. I didn't know they that. They do, yeah. Right. yeah. So that's near so, um, uh, Hyams. Hi so, Hyams yeah, 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 yeah. Beautiful part yeah. of the world. Yeah, so there's Rec Bay out there, which is a big Aboriginal community out there too. Okay. It's a missionary, so I spent a lot of time out there growing up too. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, so when did the when did the iron bug hit? Like, was that was that straight away? You went started going to the gym. I started going to the gym rehabbing, and then I saw like my body transform, and I was like, okay, like, this, this is, is cool. pretty cool. Right. Um, and then like back then, I had no idea about food, no idea about nutrition. So I used to go to Coles. I remember this. I would get those five dollar salads. Okay. And yeah. I would like just because I was at uni at the time too. Yes, yeah, so you're doing a bachelor of um, exercise phys. Exercise phys. Yeah. yeah. So that that injury sort of steered me in that direction as well. Right. So. Um, that was the route, obviously, that I chose to go down because I was like, well, I'm going through this so I can empathise with people that are also injured. And sure. They've maybe had a dream and I actually got to work with some pretty cool um, athletes. There was this one cheeky babe who I remember, she actually was going to the Olympics for javelin and she had a, um, a ruptured AC joint in her shoulder and then she was a few weeks out and she rehabbed her shoulder at training she went to go and peg the javelin and her whole sh shoulder just came out again uh, so that shattered her dream and then she actually found out that she had like stage three cancer what yeah oh, like it just so just working with these sort of people really sort of helped me um you know relate to other clients that i was treating myself so mm. and people could actually tell that i gave a shit so that was how i sort of um establish a good rapport with my clients because I actually care, you know. If you look at Ace, he's just in awe of you. He keeps staring up at you like... Yeah, he's yeah. like, oh, who's this lady? <laughs> so did you be... It's what? been a huge, like I said, it's been a huge concession of things that have happened. But I get it, like, so because you, you, you're an elite level athlete and I guess you wanted, you needed something else then to focus on. Oh, absolutely. I was going crazy. I was at school. So that's how I got the grades for exercise fizz because I was always doing breath sports. So I was going, I was never at school. I was always right. away. Right. Um, but then when I did my knee, that gave me the opportunity to focus on my studies and being from a small town, my mum had, had no money. So they're like, if you want to go to uni, you have to apply for a scholarship, which is what I did. And I actually got a really, um, rare scholarship that they were offering. And it was like, I was one of like 20,000 applicants that got it. So oh. no, it was, that allowed me to move up to Sydney and pay rent. But at the time I was at uni, I was working like three jobs. Yeah. I was at uni from nine to five, Monday to Friday. It wasn't one of those fluffy courses. Okay. Like it was a full on course. We yeah, had to be there every day, lots of content. Um, so yeah, I was back and forth like working in pubs and stuff, trying to just make ends meet. And training. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I remember I used to take my big six pack, when six pack bags came out back then, I used to take my like, big six pack bag to uni. Bag of meals. Yeah. Yeah, right. I was up at like 2 a.m. prepping. Wow. Like, so you were already doing that first stuff. You were yeah. doing it. Well, so I, what was your, so were, did you have mentors at that stage or were you just looking online? No, or? I, don't, I, I don't know. I just, it's something that it always interests me. Like I'd always followed male bodybuilding, not so much female bodybuilding, to be honest. So all the old school, like Lee Priest and stuff like that, okay. always, that always interests me. Okay. Um, I just loved the way that they trained and I could, I felt like I trained that way as well and there's not, that many people that do, yeah. You know, I feel like I love training by myself because I find it's hard to actually match, you know, with my intensity. Because I'm quite intense when I train. I bring that that okay. athlete mindset into sure. my training. So okay. that's probably why I've been able to maintain this size and to be the way that I am. Because have you had male training partners? That have absolutely, had that I've never had one female trainer. Really, really interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. But don't get me wrong. The more that I've I've been out there, the more um, I'm actually exposed to more women. The do train, train um, yeah, properly. Yeah, mm. like even in the powerlifting industry, <clears throat> like those girls go hard, you know. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of chicks that I look up to in that in that industry because you know they're pushing the weight. Day in, that's it. Yeah. So, uh, um, what did you do first, bodybuilding or powerlifting? So I did bodybuilding first. Right. So I actually so did an through. ASN 12 week challenge. That's how okay. I got into it. Okay. So someone came. I can't remember who it was, but like if you were you at City Gym at this point, I was. Yeah, I so just started you, there because yeah. I actually lived. I moved into um. Oh, what happened, Steve? Oh, we just ran out of stories, but this is still going. Turn off the loop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all right. Okay, you've been saving that's too much fine. porn. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll delete the porn. Um, no. was, so, I don't know. Uh, yeah, so I, I moved into Glee with one of my girlfriends because I didn't have a place to live at the time, to be honest, because I've been through a very bad breakup. So okay. she allowed me to stay with How us. How old were you? I would have been eighteen. Damn. Yeah, so it's young to be in bad um, breakups. Yeah, I met, I met a really um awful human and then manipulated me into 
you know, a lot of physical abuse and stuff like that. So I guess that was also why I got into it because I wanted to be strong. I wanted to protect myself. And it, the gym was actually a safe place for me to go. Mm, so I remember that, that time when you were a yeah. surgeon back then. That, yeah. was, that was then, right? Yeah. When, yeah. 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 I remember you sometimes I'd be there till you know, late at night because I made me happy, it made me feel good. And sometimes I would go back to be at home with this person and I didn't know what mood he would be in. You know, he might break my things and tear my clothes. I didn't know. So the gym is your happy place. Absolutely. Yeah. As it is for so many people. Yeah, it really is. And for it's, sure. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it should be promoted as such, you know, I, that's why I'm pretty big about promoting I, I agree, my definitely. spirituality and the things that I've been through and how I've gone through this awakening as a person and yeah. realised that I need not associate myself with that, but also not go back to the past and let that come into, you know, future, or, yeah, or present relationships, yeah. And I think that's really big. I think a lot of people have been, especially females in this industry, down a destructive path or maybe with a destructive partner. Mm-hmm. Um, so they sometimes take to the stage because they feel like they need to prove something to somebody. Yep. Get validation. Uh, absolutely. And hey, I was there. Or, I did it. And just to move on the next <clears throat> step, something to focus mm, on yeah. after a breakup. Yeah. Like Barnaby Joyce's ex-wife. Yes. <laughs> right. Or when I split, when my marriage split up, I yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I you find that, that you just, after something that. happens within you where you it needs to yeah. Yeah, channel that, yeah, channel all that energy. To something to focus We've through. talked about a lot on the podcast before how the gym for us has always been therapy. 100%. And, um, and it's something that I think is lost on in the, in the fitness industry <clears> in general. <throat> it's, you know, like, like you mentioned, the 12-week challenges mm. and things like that. They're missing the sort of basic core of training, which is mm. going to the gym and feeling better when you're there. 100%. Leave, rather than worrying about... You know, the end result, result. Mm, yeah. just you know, getting under under a squat bar, the well, that's why being that, present. That's exactly why I got into powerlifting because I actually went on stage, and don't get me wrong, amazing experience. There was one moment where I walked off and I was like, "Is that it?" Right. It didn't feel that void. Yeah, but you so, look great. Like you, you won. Oh, right? that's great. I did win. Yeah, yeah. When did you win? Um, I went into figure novice yeah. for my first year, and I won overalls. So yeah, you killed it. Yeah, and I, <laughs> about my NBA. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. Like. Um, and then I actually went on to compete in IFBB. Yeah. Like straight after doing IFBB, and I was actually natural then. And I actually um, made the decision to go unnatural in that transition. Yes. And I had two weeks. So I had two weeks in between the IFBB, which was natural, and then the IFBB, I think it was New South Wales qualifiers or something like that. Right. Where I chose to um, take a little bit of Anava right. for the first time, and I was. For two weeks you took it? Yeah. <laughs> Did that even do anything? It actually even made me a lot harder because yeah, well, I was I was young, you know. I was and female, like it has such female, an impact on women. Yeah, and I'd already trained in that way, like I'd, all, I'd already had that intensity. So that yes. was like the nos that I needed, yeah, you know, right. on, on my engine. Yeah, yes. It already, wasn't just me just going through the motions. Like I was fucking there. I was already in top gear. Yeah, you found a yeah. new gear. To, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's back up a bit before before we go into the performance enhancements um, part. So you um so you you did your show um and what so you walked off you looked great you won the show mm. but it really wasn't no I didn't feel that void for me so because you didn't just beat think, anybody well, yeah it wasn't like what I've been used to in my sport where it's competitive where it's one on one where it's contact even yeah. with rugby league it's so you go to war it's absolutely it's yeah. it's like you need <clears throat> that worry energy to to just fucking. Yes. Tackle this bitch or right. whatever. Bodybuilding you know? is subjective. Absolutely. It's long. It's... I, don't, I never even viewed the competition mm. as a competition. Mm. I viewed the, the, the jack training as a competition. 100%. Like I would go into the gym, you know, I mean, you know how Yeah, you and beat your reps yeah. or beat your right. weight. Yeah. Exactly. Push your max, go to fire. Yeah. Um, I, I always viewed the competition as, as a play. As, as, no, play. As, as, a, as this is this is what I've achieved. This is, in the yeah, yeah, 100%. This is, this is what I've achieved yeah. in, in the years prior. I didn't feel like my competition was a reflection of how hard I worked in okay. the gym. Okay. So that's why I transferred onto powerlifting because someone said to me, hey, you work pretty strong. And I'm like, okay. And then I actually remember I, I was like, fuck it, I'm scared to do a powerlifting comp. I prepped for like two weeks. Yeah. It was awful. It was absolutely just shocking. I don't even remember, but I think I bombed down on my squat and stuff like that. I, I didn't have the right coaching either, but um, but you I did it and so, loved it. But you, so you were using those, those the big basic lifts in your training then? Yeah, I was always running. So what? So what? I mean, because that's not something that women 
I mean, Gabriella does it because mm. she she was. Yeah, so Gabby's a beast. Gabby's yeah, a beast. but so like you, I remember I actually she was at my prom and yeah. she broke that bench and record. Ironically, isn't it funny? Like she hardly trains at all now. She's fifty one. Yeah, and she's still jacked. Yeah, she's still got it. And like you, it's about maintaining built, built that, that density. Absolutely, the strength. And I think it's so overlooked these days. Like there's oh, so completely. there's so many videos about glute you know, exercises, bands, and all these fucking it's bullshit. Like Sorry. You, that post you did the other day about squatting. Oh, yeah, man, just squat. Just fucking just squat. Just lift heavy. <laughs> yes. Like, Push the weight, like that's where the foundation is established. Yes. And then don't get me wrong, there's nothing, nothing bad with the booty band stuff. Do I do that, yeah, yeah as, an, as an accessory. Yes, yes. You know, I wouldn't do that as the main primary foundation. And then I, I have so many females that come to me, they're like, right, I just want to use booty bands. I'm like, no, we're not doing that. Yeah. Like, why? Because I've saw this thing on Instagram. I'm like, no, yeah, I'm just yeah. not going to do that because it's just it's not giving people the right it idea of how to train. It's, it does it look? It might burn. Yeah. But it doesn't actually build no, up muscle. No. It's just about isolation. And most yes. of those exercises come from prehab and rehab. Absolutely. Movement. And that's they're what I supposed to be my your, need to. Yeah. Yeah. They're not supposed to be the foundation of your no. workout. That's what I'm massive about. I do. I'm a massive advocate for compound lifts, but obviously done correctly there's yes. also a lot of coaches out there who i've seen don't oh. teach their female athletes how to lift properly i was actually um don't get us that i'm not gonna i'm not, I'm not gonna episode. mention their names but there was this someone that um i was oh, baby, that, um i was watching that was getting all these females to do like 150 kilo deadlift with absolutely shocking form yeah. and yeah. i'm pretty sure everyone knows who i'm talking about and then also posting up oh this is so and so client beating this record of in this powerlifting federation, and so all of us powerlifters are like, yeah, Pardon? what the fuck? I know. And then we're watching like this girl almost break her back, and yeah. this coach actually post it and think yeah, that's proud okay. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So. It's so just... where did you learn to actually um, those lifts? They just you, you, you. How did you arrive at the fact that you should train like you do? Because it was. Just it just hard. always stimulated it me. Yeah. Right, like okay. I just found like, fuck. If I do isolation, I would just walk out of the gym and be like. Yes. Me walking out of the gym, I'm not even going to walk out of the gym. Yes. It's like sweet. Yeah. And I feel I like I'm not yeah. fucked. Like yeah. it wasn't a session. Yeah. And how did you knee handle the squats? And you stuff? know what? I was actually a case study at the MARTA North Sydney because I actually don't have an ACL in my knee at the moment. <laughs> what? Yeah. So I actually squat without an ACL. Jesus so because I've had four reconstructions on my right knee, the I did it again, and then I actually went and saw the top surgeon. For fucking the the sport surgeon basically, mm. and he goes, if we go, get into that knee again for the fifth time, you're yeah. t- 24. I was 24 at the yeah. time, so it's been two years pr- um, prior. Um, he's like, it's just gonna uh, interrupt the joint capsule again. You're gonna need a knee replacement <clears throat> at, at 30 years old. Yeah. So me hearing that, I was like, fuck, because it was actually giving me a bit of grief. It was flaring up and it started to ache and stuff and I was like fuck I don't know if I'm gonna be able to keep squatting mm. that's when I dedicated so much time and so much of my own um doing my own research right of how I could squat pain-free how I could use my hips what position do I need to put the bar in what yeah. do I need to be doing with my back what is it access like accessories I can do on my glutes you know how can I strengthen my knee functionally like yeah it's amazing how many people will say to you say to us um Oh, I don't deadlift or squat because mm. I've got this injury. Oh, I, I injured nice. it during. It's because yeah. of bad technique. Absolutely. Well, I actually have a deadlift seminar that's next Saturday. I was going to mention that. Yeah, um, yes. April 13th. Yeah. So that's um, what I'm doing. I'm actually mentioning how the deadlift is crucial for oh, back rehab. Strength. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, if taught correctly, but yes. if taught incorrectly, it could be obviously be the complete opposite of that. There's just needs to be more education, and I think coming from a female female to female yep. like the fact that I did lift and I'm a power lifter and I can lift quite a bit of weight and I do that pain free and so just, just the workshop is at April 13th. Uh, UFC gym Rockdown, April 13th 9 a.m. to 11 okay. so it's a two-hour workshop there's actually a link in my bio yeah, on my Instagram so the cost is $80 it's that's really great. it's really affordable that's like I don't it's not about me making money it's about me teaching Yes. Like, and I love to teach. This is what I love to do. And to be honest, I love deadlifting when I'm feeling shit. It makes oh, me feel more empowered as a person. About so many oh, times. Yeah. It's like, again, it's, it's, war- it's warrior energy. It's, it's just life like, affirming. You fucking go there and you lift that shit. It doesn't matter if you've had a fucking shit day. Yeah. It doesn't matter who's ticked you off. You go there, you lift the weight, totally. do it correctly. The iron never lies. That's yeah. it. But you know Henry Rollins quote? 
No, I didn't French, hear that. Oh, I'll, show, I'll show you the yeah. whole thing, but it says, um, you know, people can call you a god or a bastard. Um, uh, friends or friends can come and go, but yeah. 200 pounds is always 200 pounds. 100%. Pounds. And I, the gym is my best boyfriend. You know, he's so he's fucking reliable. He's always there for me. Yeah. Um, and that's, like I said. Yeah, I get been... emotional thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Dude, seriously. Don't get me wrong. There's been so many times where I've sat it's... in the gym late at night. At, yeah. Like I've gone to like 24-hour gym and I've been there at 1 a.m. And yeah. I'm like, it's you know what? I've been there through. sitting there fucking doing the hard yards and not out taking drugs. Yeah. And like that for me, like there's all there's always two roads you can go down. It's yes. like Especially you can self destruct, think... or you can, you know, you can do something for yourself. Grow. Yeah. Especially if you're prone oh, yeah. to, uh, yeah. if pre especially if you're prone to mm. uh, addictive behaviour. I've got a very addictive personality. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And um, you you can you you've got to be very careful with your mm. channel. And channel. I've been I've been down that road, and I did go down that road, you know, while in a bodybuilding prep too. I, I sort of was really into the party drugs as well and were you very vulnerable when you're prepping oh and anything that can yeah can, uh, i just think it was more so a matter of my personality and who i was hanging around and i just weren't i wasn't really sure of who i was as a person right so yeah i just associated with the wrong people and sort of exchanged one addiction to the other yeah. you know um and then all of a sudden you know got they got a bit full on we're in the <laughs> hospital and you know the only person that was there was my mum so I've been. Can I ask why you, what was the hospital? Like, what just. Um, so I basically had a three day drug induced psychosis. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, so okay. I was going through a really bad breakup. I just really wasn't sure where my next thing was. I'd just come off the back of a big powerlifting meet. Yeah. So I competed in the States and I actually placed second. Can I just ask you, um, what, what are your lifts? What's your, what are your best lifts? Okay, so 200 squat. 200 squat? Yeah. At what body weight? This is 72. Fuck's yeah. sake. And 125 bench and 225 deadlift. Now, I got That's 230 ridiculous. up to my knees at the Kern US Open. Right. But I fucked out because I wasn't thinking properly. Okay. I psyched myself out. Okay. And this is why it's so mental. mental. Game. Yeah, it's it's not physical, man. 200 squat. Yeah. That's fucking respect. Man. Yeah. That's awesome. The deadlift, the deadlift is, is That's mine. Yours, yeah? That's yours, That's mine. The head, look at your yeah. Back. Yeah. Hence the back. That's mine. I love it. But like I said, I was there at the time and. Um, yeah, I was seeing someone who wasn't necessarily that healthy for me either. I read a message before I was about to attempt my last lift. Oh. So there was a difference between I had to pull this last lift to secure first place. And if I did, obviously we got the win. Um, cause we went 220 to be safe. And this is, it's a game of strategy too. It's a game of numbers. Yeah, so good. I could either go 225 and secure second, or I could go 230, go have that. a less total if I missed it. But go for the number yeah, one. So it would have been yeah. PV too. It would have been PV as well. Yeah, yeah. But I got it. I got it to my knees. And being a cheeky baby as well, with that, all that inter abdominal pressure. Did you yeah, you fucking know if you do. Yeah, I know. Did, yeah. You, did you at the time? Oh, well, this is a thing. <laughs> I got it to my knees. The camera, I remember, was right there. And I had it to my knees. I'm like, I'm about to piss myself. And it was either I lift it and I piss myself, or I drop it. And I chose to drop it. Should've and that been, moment stays with yourself. me forever. Always. Yeah. Yeah, it's those moments that you have that split, you know, decision. Oh, do you regret? I regret it, absolutely. Oh, I should have pissed myself. Should have pissed yourself. Hundred percent. No, that guy honestly, that there's vomits on the other one and yeah. you see blood. But that's out why it's amazing. Surprising. That's why it's amazing. You've seen that because what it did, it brought you out of the moment from yeah. it for just a yeah. split yeah. second. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. Yes. But focus, why it's so your good? Your focus shifted. Is yeah. no one gives a fuck in the powerlifting industry because you're there to get a PB for your soul. So there's. Don't get me wrong, this sounds disgusting, but there's women that piss themselves in every second and third attempt. Yeah, it's been and there's quite, someone that's coming there more. But it's just, it's, it's not, it's so not. Hot, really. Huh? It's so <laughs> hot, really. You know what? No one cares. It's like if someone, when I Steve, first did it. Steve's there in the crowd. Next time he's getting aroused. <laughs> so so no, but you know what? I remember when I first did it, I never forget the day when I first did it because I had no idea. It just happened. Right. Like, and I was so in shock. And I actually, I actually broke a record, but it didn't sit because I was so embarrassed and I wet myself. Right. It's sort of like the opposite of the bodybuilding. We know every because, uh, as you know, yeah. we all know, bodybuilding yeah. is so obsessed with keep, pe yeah. not, not just this image, appearance, but yeah. keeping up their appearances, how they yeah. walk through the gym. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all, and it's I, all I, I'm guilty of it, especially like in my twenties and thirties. Oh, we all are, but, but it's all ego. Whereas, it's all but, ego. but I have to say that the power thing, 
uh, culture is at the other end where they actually staunchly yeah. trying not to be that. Yeah. So that all the guys have beards. Yeah. They're, you know, they're so gentle it, giants. They, yeah, but they can be the extreme the other way as Absolutely. well. Where they have to have their bag and they set, yeah. up, set up like their camp with yeah. a little village. No gear, like all camp. the gear and no yes. idea. Exactly. Like that, yeah. right? So there's, there's, there's quirks in both cultures. Yeah. But I do, course, I mean, there's pros and cons yeah. every But every I do thing. find with every powerlifting show I've been to, the, 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 it's such the a kind of and the culture. Um, humble, yeah. more humble community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I loved, and that's why I loved it because I went from this um, industry that Self -obsessed. was so so, and I was like, "Who am I turning into?" Yeah, you know. And then I started to use drugs more heavily because I was like, "Fuck!" I just wasn't happy with them, you know, because I didn't feel that was coming from anyone else, and I, it wasn't coming from myself. So I went down that powerlifting road, and I'm like, "Yeah, you know, I'm pretty strong, and there's some pretty cool people. They're actually nice, you know." It was very yeah, welcoming. Yeah, yeah. It was very I welcoming. think because also right because with the. You can you can compete in the bodybuilding show. We I mean, know people that do this regularly mm. who p don't place and still can believe that it's, oh, it's political, right? Yeah. Whereas with powerlifting, I mean, obviously to some degree there's a judging element. Yes, yes, But yes. you either get the yeah, lift or you fucking don't. Yeah, exactly. You so it's, it's very cut and dry. Yeah. So I'm if, never anxious for a powerlifting prep. You know how right. anxious I am for a bodybuilding prep because yeah. you just don't know. You can look your best, and that's what I did in my. So I competed last year in the pro roll, and then I competed the year before, and I, I jumped on stage, and I was devastated because I was one of the biggest figure athletes there, yeah. and I was actually told when I walked off that I was in the wrong category. Right. So I, I went through a 30 week prep, and I fucking gave it my all. 30 weeks of prep, and I looked the weeks. best I'd ever looked, but I actually went to a workshop. Uh, four weeks out, I was, I'd, I'd be, reached my best condition. I had, you know, really good shape. And then I went to a workshop and I was told that I needed to cut down in size if I wanted to do figure. And I had my, my heart set on figure. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then I was told I had to do physique and I had two two weeks to do a routine. I just wasn't ready. It wasn't a heel thing. It was a matter of my what I'd visualised in my mind and I had not even thought of the concept of doing physique. You're pretty lucky though. And we've talked about this as well. Some girls put on size, you know, take supplements and um, still still look feminine mm, mm, and still uh, mm. you know still have curves i'm very, I'm very passionate about that yeah and we'll, yeah we'll get so let's talk about that mm. and and as you know some girls do it and it may not be necessarily they i don't know you know more about this mm. than me but for whatever reason they look like a train wreck you mm, know? Mm. and they've really sacrificed their femininity yeah so you i mean you've you started a, a, um, look, a page I, called yeah. australian female warriors yes 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 to actually help women with yeah, regards to this yeah i want to um i want women to come together Women that are using sports enhancers um, or not, just people that are just naturally interested in the field of whether it be bodybuilding, powerlifting, strong yeah. women. Um, strong athletes. We've got some rugby league players in there. We've fighters, got potentially. Some fighters, fighters. yeah, bonds in there. Um, so, what I'm trying to do, because I know a lot of different chickies from different. Um, oh, Bonnie's in there. Yeah. Ah, cool. You know Bonnie? I do. Yeah, she's a weapon. Mm, she's awesome. She's, she's amazing. Because I used she to play I used to play lingerie gridiron with, with her. her. Ah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jess used to do it as well, didn't Yeah, she? yeah. We've well, all done it. Like great, you know what I mean? Like I've gone great from sport. this to that. You know? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well, we were supposed to get paid all this money because I was a bit umming and ahhing about doing that because I didn't know how I felt about it. We were offered a lot of money. We did all this training, hours of training on Sunday in the middle of right. Parramatta. Did, did you wear lingerie when you trained? No, oh. but I was under the assumption that I was going to get paid get big bucks. Right, and so, no, did it ever happen? I didn't. I wasn't sure on the idea completely because I didn't know. But I just didn't like how it sexualized us women as athletes. So mm. I, don't, my heart wasn't completely in it. <laughs> um, I don't mean to sound like a feminist, but I just feel I like you sound like a feminist if you want. Um, like even I've had. I've got a lot of dude mates, but I've even been in the gym and I've just been training and I've had, you know, some men approach me and be fucking really sleazy. And yeah. I'm like, that is just, no, like they don't respect me as a female athlete, you know, and I think that's pretty... Well, pretty the lingerie thing's not really helping that, is No, it? no. I still think those athletes are amazing, but it's like... What's what is that? What is the purpose? And that's what I don't I don't judge anyone that does it. That's their journey. But for me, it's like I look into the whys of why I'm doing what I'm doing. Is it attracting the wrong attention? What sort of how am I marketing myself as an individual? It's a fine line, isn't it? Because you get some people that they're posting that, that we talked about this with Cerise who was on before, mm. and um, some people they post a photo of their butt, yeah. and then there'll be all this thing about self love. And exactly, it's women. just ridiculous. And, and whereas Cerise will say. 
haven't posted any slutty photos for a while. Here's a picture of my butt. Yeah. It's sort of yeah, more honest. Yeah, like fucking honest. Yeah. It's, yeah. What, yeah. Look, I, I, I'm used to that, that as well, I guess, too. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's been times where I've put up, but it's, again, drawing the wrong attention that I've, I've deleted it. And, right. Yeah, you know, that was when I was a bit younger and a bit more naive, I guess. Um, but growing as a woman in this industry, you need to just, you need to really value your self worth. Um, you need to. Set your boundaries. Yeah, step up, set your standards, man. Like a lot of <clears throat> chicks mm -hmm. out there are selling themselves short and even attaching themselves to, thank you, all these brands, um, you know, that just sexualizes women. And I think, yeah. like, there's no need. Like, Speaking of brands, mm. you have some sponsors? Yeah, so I'm sponsored by Loaded Lifting. Loaded Lifting? Oh. What, what oh. are they? Are that clothing, is it? Yeah, these are actually seamless. They're really good. I love mm -hmm. this colour too. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually down there at the Arnold's helping them out because I wasn't competing at the Arnold's. Right. So um, it was really nice to just interact with um, just the crowd. Do they have belts as well? Yeah, I was yeah. getting everyone to sniff the salts and shit. Yeah. Doing like push-up cool. competitions and... Um, it was just really nice helping people, you know, try their knee sleeves on, get the right size for them and... I think it was good having a female there because a lot of chicks came up to the store and were interested yeah, in, in belts and, surprise, yeah. you know, then I was talking to them about their training and how they're squatting and then we were exchanging videos and, Insta you know, Instagram accounts and yeah. it's just a way for me to market myself, you know, um, and use that as a platform. Eventually I would like to, um, you know, come up with my own lifting brand and stuff like that, but that's in the future. So with the, um, getting back to the supplements, um, yeah. What was your introduction to him? You said you did a couple of weeks on Anavar. Yeah. Um, so Anavar, Clenbuterol. Had you done much research yourself? No, no, no. no so not back it was then. A, someone was. Yeah, I had a coach. Because, as like you just said at the start, yeah. a lot of women, it may be a coach or a boyfriend, yeah. they're, they're coming from a male perspective. Yeah. They just think more is better. Like Absolutely. I, I and I did, did as well. And at the time, I was in this mindset where I was like, I'll do anything to win. Yeah. So, whatever little magic pill I had to take, sure. I would do that, which is not a healthy way to be at all. No. And I recognize that now because I'm on the other end of that now. But, um, do you have any I regrets? Think, no, because I, it's, it's made me who I am today, and I can actually empathize and relate to women in the same category like yeah. um also my my family I, I, they are aware of that because obviously they've seen my voice change my mum um because i obviously don't live with my family so there would be months at a time where i'd see them and then i'd see them six months and then my mum's like fuck your voice has changed <laughs> the, the, the changes are quite dramatic yeah and i can actually listen to myself sometimes I'm like fuck you know it has been like that and it hasn't been able to sort of go back to where it was and I think me being open about that um, will hopefully encourage women to look into the supplements that they're taking I should have definitely researched what I put in my body before um, but I was young at the time and literally I was in that mindset like whatever my coach says to do I'll do because that's what I was used to ever even when I was a young yeah. kid you know you do what your coach says if your coach says fucking run laps around yeah the you do it you don't 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 talk back you do yeah. you just do what you're told and that's what I invested myself into someone, um, again, lesson that won't do that again, but you got to take ownership of your health and take ownership of what you're putting in your body. I agree. Completely. Um, because there are serious repercussions, like, you know, um, and I actually, no one really knows about this, but what happened was I actually fell really ill after one of my competitions. I was experiencing all this pain in my lower ab region. So I went to the gynecologist. And I had developed polycystic ovary syndrome, then I had endometriosis, and it was so inflamed, um, and all the an the answers was basically just take more, take more, take more. Um, take more gear? Yeah, like, I, just because I was bloating, so we're like, we'll add oh, this in, we'll add that in, so let's harden you up. And I was like, fuck, something's not right here. Yeah, right. So what I did, I sat there, and the guy was like, how do you feel if I told you that you won't be able to have kids? And I was like what like and having been coming from a big family having children is it's like, if you ask me what is my number one thing that i want oh, it would be have kids right like even though i'm only 26 that is something i would love to have many versions of myself sure um especially to you know continue that's not set in stone though right? pardon the fact no 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 but i've worked i've worked on my getting nutrition healthy. getting myself healthy researching <clears throat> refeeding lifting heavy to cure myself so the toxin. without the help of my coach so i actually went back to my coach and like, this is what the goal is and he's like just have rest i was like i need like a reverse Does cycle plan if you, if you continue this may be he's like you're he's like you really like messed up there yeah like, right and then actually last year in july i had surgery because i had cancerous cells in my cervix which is also found 
um, with the same abdominal pain. So I don't know, but I really feel like because I neglected that part of my health um, and I didn't listen to the signs what he was giving me, um, I developed a little bit of cervical cancer. That's now been removed. Right. Um, but it, wow. that was a huge turning point for me where I really had to look into, okay, why the fuck am I doing this? Like, why am I actually doing this? What is, what is the main reasons? And I think a lot of females don't, it's all about the here and now. It's all that jumping yeah, on stage sure. and looking fabulous. But what about in 10 years' time? And the consequences are so much greater for women oh. than, than men. Men, men taking yeah. uh, a, a hormone that's already readily available in their body. Absolutely. I mean, uh, sure, we can obviously still do damage yeah. and people do stupid yeah. things, but it's so little is required I know if so necessary. many chicks that I've actually spoken to privately about what their coach is getting them to take. And sometimes it's actually more than males. Yeah. And the, I mean, I myself include, we've just got the wrong guidance. And I feel yeah. as a as a woman, I need to invest more time in studying pharmacology so I can actually really be a resource for be people, a resource for, for people and especially women. And being one myself that has used and enhances. And I will, I will, because I could plan to jump on stage at the end of the year. Okay. Maybe. We'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, I, I'm going to obviously choose to go down that road again, but right. that's not until I get my bloods done. That's not yeah. until I do all these routine checks that I need to do and make sure number one, my mental health is okay. Yes. And this is at the right time. Um, um and because I'll, I'll just on that, on that, on that issue of mental health, because mm. I, like I, you know, I've discussed it has big impacts on mine. Mm. Um, how did it, how did it affect you mentally when you were on a cycle? Oh, you... fuck, there was times where I was a bit suicidal. Like I was really... So you didn't feel good? Oh no. There, look, don't get me wrong, I did. Well, you did. I bet you did when you were training. I did when I was training, but, but it, it didn't matter. When I walked outside the gym, I was fucking angry. Yes. I was just not myself. I was very, <laughs> like, egotistical. So it was always... It was like I was a dude. It was and like... It, uh, well, because I was, I, was, I was consuming <laughs> male hormones. Yes. So, you know, like, I started to develop those traits. Even my my mum, because she's quiet. My mum's beautiful and gentle. She's like, you were just... Like I would come home and I'd crack the shits because I would tell her to get me some sweet potato and she had no idea. So she'd get me one sweet potato when I needed four fucking sweet potatoes. So I'd lose my shit yeah, and I'd come down home and I'd just be losing my shit the only time I'd see my family. About sweet potato. About sweet potato. And they're like, yeah. Are you, what's wrong with you? But then I had to fully take a back step and, you know. What about libido? Did it enhance your libido? Heaps. Well, that's some positives. Um, yeah, no, but then again, I got in trouble because I was associating myself with the wrong people. Right. Um, and I think that really added to my self-destructive behaviour. You can see what, this is what teenage boys go through. Yeah. This is exactly what, and yeah. it's, it's, it's And even fucking... I know a lot of fucking teenage boys use a lot of fucking gear with no guidance. Well, that's oh, insane. Steve just means... I just mean teenage yeah. boys in general. Oh, just in general. That's how you, that's yeah. how we, that's how you feel when you're a kid. When yeah. you're 16 at school, wow. and you're at the desk, or the, like lifting the desk up with a bone, and, you, and you're, you're angry, and you don't know why. Oh, I felt like I just had, um, like... You know, before I get my period, I was just premenstrual. Just going in the mating mode. Yeah. But, um, yeah, man. So, um... It's a whole subject within itself, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and, and it's good that you talk... I'm mad respect for talking about it, because... Uh, I have so nothing to hide, was... man. I used to have a lot to hide, but now I'm just like... I'm an open book. Anyone that anyone wants, like, wants to approach me about stuff and ask me... Or their experiences... Because um, apart, apart from the legal issues, mm. um, other women that use the drugs they're just doing a disservice to people like their clients when they say no i only just use a bit of a growth hormone mm. like when your voice is deeper than mine it's um, just about it's just about and maintaining an image and i think that's what this industry you're not helping people are you? i'm not that's why i've got i've got what who, who am i maintaining an image for if i'm happy within myself that's me being honest so if i'm being honest i'm going to be like yeah if people ask you what do you take i'll tell them i'm taking this i'm taking that I've taken this, I've taken all this shit at once, and that fucked me up. But at least I've given them what I've done, and they can be like, okay, cool. Did yeah. you, uh, other than the voice mm. deepening, did you, did you get, like, body hair or other... Oh, other like, things? I got a little bit of hair on my chin. And I love putting makeup on, I love looking like a girl, so for me, like, that was a big deal. Yeah, you know, yeah, Where yeah. I had to start plucking my chin, and I'm like, 
Come like on. it's fucked up, yeah, but yeah. like this shit, no one talks about. Yeah. What like, else? What else? Um, you know, he's, heaps you know of he's, pimples. Oh, on you know what he's saying, Steve? Heaps, you know what yeah. he's saying? Heaps of pimples <laughs> on my back. But look, um, that yeah, that that is that it, does, it does change. Yeah, it does change. That's, that's <laughs> was that, come on, man. No, but like with with was respect, it, with was respect, that good yeah. Or bad? No, it's like that was, was that good. was horrible for okay. me. Like okay. that's why I was so discontinued, you know. And that's things that you know people don't don't talk about no, either. Talk about at all. It's funny. I had a, this tattooist that did this that tattooed my daughter and my neck. Mm. Um, so she was uh, he, she was transitioning oh, yeah. to be to become yeah, a man, yeah, right, yeah. Brady? And um, and so she had a double mastectomy, mm. um, uh, hysterectomy. Mm. And um, was shaving. Mm. She, she looked like a sort of chubby guy. Yeah, but that's just from one mil of test oh, a week. One, doctor was one, one mil of test a week. Yeah, and she was becoming a bloke. And that gives you some perspective on so these women that are taking that or more. Yeah, and but, I know heaps of women. Right? I can rattle so many women off the yeah. that I know are dosing way more. That's all they were prescribing for her, and, she, yeah. and that yeah. was to having massive changes. Crazy. T- turning into a man. It's crazy. Yes. And I, I look a lot of. Um, women that I compete with, especially in powerlifting, there is a lot of um, choice because again, aesthetic versus performance based, we do use different um, compounds. different compounds exactly for different um, results. Exactly, strength mm. or like I said, losing body fat or maintaining a harder look. Mm. Um, but a lot of chicks that I compete against actually used probably even twice more twice than, than the bodybuilders. Oh, like, oh, and oh, compared to the example Steve gave, yeah, one that I, yeah. What, what would be something that, you know, that, I, 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 I'm not going to say exactly how much, but I do know that it's it's around that, it's and it, that. and it's and it is a mix of, of other substances too. That's um, and a few of them do look trans, like yeah, yes. um, that, and, can, that yeah. can be sort of hard. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you into, look, I'm not I'm not here to judge anyone. That's yeah. everyone's look. Everyone has a choice. That's everyone right. has a choice, it's, it's and almost... I'm not here to judge anyone or talk shit about anyone. I'm just here to tell people about my experiences yeah. and I know women around me that I've surrounded myself with, I do know because we do talk, so I do know what they are taking yeah. um, to the full degree. Don't know because, again, it's up to the individual about how much they want to disclose. I have nothing to hide, so I talk about everything that I've, you know, decided to put in my body. Um, but it's like, where, where to from in, in 10, 5 years, 5, yeah. 10 years time, you know? Yeah. That's just what I focus on with my clients is about not the hard and fast approach, but about sustainability. What's sustainability? I was just going to say, yeah, sustainability. Mm. So many people, mm. if they do train like you do, mm. and if they if they eat right, yeah, they can build amazing, beautiful Absolutely. physiques yeah, man. without stepping off like stage. Like I said, I'm na- I've been natural and I've still maintained my size. And like I said, I'll probably stay natural for a long time in my prep until we need to start you know, maybe adding things in. I'm going to work closely with a few different people, a few different... um you know, well-respected medical medical right. professionals, yep. yeah, that yep. actually understand yep. the pharmacology and the, the the physiology of the female body. But I think also understanding as well, being female helps. So if I can relay how I'm feeling to that coach and continuously provide feedback, I think it's going to be good. So if people want to um, hit you up on the, that's the Australian Female Warriors? That's yeah, so, so um, what's, how's that? what's the format of that? So like, I just I just want people to send me their their pictures and their bios. Um, and it's a Facebook group. It's Instagram, Instagram. Instagram. but Instagram. it is a Facebook group as well. Right. So there's a link on there. Right. Um, and just tell the world a little bit about themselves and um, how they're a warrior themselves and what they've overcome. Because everyone has a story to tell. Have you got That's many, what I've noticed. Many members, yeah. Heaps. Yeah, cool. I've only been operating for like not long. No, but probably about two, three weeks. And yeah. I've already got five hundred followers. Wow. You know, and that's like it's not no, it's not. Pa- I'm not paying followers. I just want a genuine following. Yeah. Of and I've got such a beautiful um, response to it, where mm. you know a lot of females inbox such a great idea. You know, we need something like this. And what I want to do eventually, my vision is to unite all these women and talk about mindfulness and talk about pharmacology in more detail, and offer them, you know, even get together and do yoga together and to practice. That's self so cool. love and meditation because so I've been doing that myself and I found that that's really helped me get to where I am now as an athlete is learning how to go within um because I'm full on like I am erratic as fuck I'm go 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 and it takes a toll so I have really high highs and really low lows yeah. so what I've done I've actually implemented um yoga and a bit of um qigong with um Some my meditation. friend Dan um 
and his Instagram is new for you. So he actually runs Qigong and he actually plays a didgeridoo. Oh, cool. So what we do, we do the Qigong and then um, we actually do half an hour meditation and he plays the dinge. And for me, I just close my eyes and just everything, it's just, it's beautiful. It transcends time. Like it's just ama that, that amazing feeling of that yeah. moment that I have with myself and I'm at peace. And that helps me get through my week. You know, yeah. and there's a lot of things from my past that I need to let go. How often do you do that? I try weekly. and do it weekly. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So we've mm. talked a lot about um, meditation and mm. um, mindfulness. Mm. And the, well, uh, the need, up, I personally need to do it. Um, yeah. I do it every morning. Um, I think coming from an addictive personality as well, it's just that release of control, that release of certainty. Yeah. Because we don't know what, what tomorrow has in store for us, you know. Like, I say things, but I don't... Like even jumping on stage and let's just see what happens. I'm just gonna go with the flow and wherever the universe takes me, I'm gonna go. But I'm gonna just train hard, eat well, you know, research, educate myself, so then I can educate others. That's pretty cool. Are you uh, now that you're <clears throat> kind of to say off season and off mm. performance enhancing mm. enhancers, is your diet? Are you are you really strict? With it? Like I like I like tracking. Um, so this is a food box. <laughs> What's in there? Do you want to actually know? How many meals? So okay, this? that's probably about two, three meals. Oh, okay, right. so I just I, snack, gonna, I snack on this all day. But it's in here. It's hundred grams of rice. Okay, that's weight uncooked, and then a hundred. Uh, sorry, and five hundred grams of chicken, weight uncooked. Okay. Okay, so that's two, three, four meals. Yes, yeah. Okay. Um, but I plug a lot of shit into my fitness pal. I'm also um, quite flexible with my diet at the moment. I like to see how hard I can push my body and push out my calories. Mm. So some days I might do a 24 hour fast where I'll fast from um, 8 p.m. to 8 p.m. the next day to increase insulin sensitivity and I find that really works. So I've implemented doing cardio. And then what happens when 8 p.m. comes around? Do you pee out after that? I backload. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I keep That's pretty clean, yeah? Yeah. 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 That's, not, that's all I crave, man. I've been down that road where I used to go from fucking bakery to bakery to bakery oh, to bakery. Fuck. You know, I'm still I've there. been down there. Thirty years of training, I'm still there. Oh, that relationship with food I have is horrible. I was going to ask you. So what? You, yeah. So your relationship for food is healthy? Oh, is positive so healthy now? now it's so what, how did they change? Yeah. Um, honestly, powerlifting helped me a lot because I could eat more, and I've always been a big eater. And so you didn't. You weren't constantly trying to manage. I played. Don't get me wrong. I fucking played five sports when I was a kid. Yeah. So do you like so the you amount just, of food I used? To, I was a swimmer. I was swimming five days right. a week. So then going from that and then putting, getting put on these calories. Twelve hundred calorie diets. Like for me, my body didn't, did not respond. No, that's one meal. Yeah, I had that for <laughs> breakfast this morning in the gym. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's the thing as well. So I don't feel like a lot of coaches actually understand the potential of some female bodies because I feel like some of my coaches should have looked at how high I can push my carbs. Because when and I was, how hard you're training. Yeah, because no one actually... That. I don't feel like there's a lot of people out there that train like me, so I feel like I can eat a lot more. Mm. And a lot of people criticize... Don't get me wrong, when I fucking sit here and eat this, I get so many people that walk past and like, fuck, that's a big meal. Yeah. But I'm like, you don't fucking know how hard I train or... 100 grams goes dry in. rice yeah. does about, what, 250 cooked? Would that be about right? Yeah, think? yeah. And I five, put a lot of water in it, so... 500 chicken yeah. come down to, say... 400, 400, 70, yeah. 70, yeah. 70 yeah. of that, yeah. Yeah, but don't get me wrong, it's a few meals in there, so like I said, I snack. So not, I don't not, gorge on protein no. or anything, I just snack, I pick on it through the it's day. It's not huge meals though, like it's no. pretty like reasonable. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a big breakfast, I love, I'm a breakfast girl. Me too. Man. Yeah, I'm I have a huge girl, breakfast. But, yeah. Well, the breakfast I had this morning was two eggs, two pieces of toast, blueberry bagel, and a protein shake. Carved up. And yeah. a protein shake. Yeah. yeah. I love breakfast. Yeah. It's my so, favourite meal. But I'm, I plug a lot of shit into my fitness pal, and I really track because i like to see what i'm having over a day if i'm still hungry for a big leg session i had like big leg, leg session the other day and i already consumed like 250 grams of carbs and i was still starving right. so then i pushed it up to 350 and then the next day i just <clears> felt <throat> great i wasn't tired i wasn't lethargic i'm like fuck 350 grams of carbs is good man maybe that's what i'm doing wrong maybe i'm not eating enough carbs during the day mm. i only have see a, how high you can push your body i, only, I, only, I have 150 grams that's of carbs. Why, you know, 150 mm, grams that's why when night right. comes around yeah. seven yeah. pm eight pm whatever you you I go think... for sugary carbs yeah. maybe and smash and, and binge on them yeah maybe. so i i get my good carbs in through the day so my rice my sweet potato and then at night time that's when i go for <coughs> like i have some ice cream i have yogurt and some granola or heaps of fruit or i make like a protein stop, smoothie though? How I've got a great restraint. I just do. do my body here. If I'm full, I'm like, sweet. See, I, I, yeah. Okay. So, but if you're having that response, that's probably a sign that you're not having enough carbohydrates because it's all day. hormonal. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's all my hormones are in a really good state yeah, now, so I, I have that where I know I'm full. All my my hormones are like sweet. I I um. I, con- I con- concur. Yeah. That. I um I've had times when I've had just fish and veggies mm. each throughout the day. Mm-hmm. Fish, veggies, fish, veggies, fish, without the cut. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. Out. And at night, those yeah. are, and when I'm doing that at night, yeah. those are the times when I have the biggest yeah. cravings. For yeah. It. For of chocolate course, or of whatever, course. yeah. But if I add in, even yeah. if it's only a token 100 grams of sweet potato yeah. each meal, oh, you're good to go. I've had That's what grams. I tell, like, especially I don't have females, because well, I'm terrified felt, of carbs. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of females <clears throat> hate carbs. Yeah. So I sit down with a lot of people and, and I'm like, so you're not having carbs through the day, you're restricting your from, yourself from that, but then you're binging on XYZ yeah. that night. I said, let's put some carbs it's in, it's you know, let's push the weight. It's directly related, 100%. Absolutely. It's directly related. Yeah. So I think it's, yeah, it's having that healthy relationship. But like I said, I think a lot of people don't understand the potential of their own bodies and how much a lot of coaches is like, here, have this cookie cutter diet that I've been prescribing to fucking 20,000 people. You can have it as well because it's going to work for you. No, who's to say that I can't have wow, so exactly. much of this, so Especially much of that? Who says, no one knows my body. I know your, my body. Or your history, like, yeah. your, like the, what's exactly. led you to get where you yeah. are now. Yeah. All those sports you played, all the yeah. energy you burn off. And it really makes you question coaching and online coaching. Um, Everyone's different, you know, because, you because there's yeah. so much specificity, individuality and within individuality. a person. How much, sure. how much research do you do on that person to understand their physiology? And also, even if you see someone's numbers online, yeah, you don't really know the no, intensity they're trying no, to have. No, no. So, I mean, how do you know if they're if, what sort of calorie requirements they have? Exactly. I would. Would you, would you agree though? That some, I mean, as you said, a lot mm. of people uh, don't train like you do. Mm. And um, most people just don't train hard enough in general. Mm. There's two, for me, there's the basic basic two flaws are bad technique yeah. and just no intensity. Yeah, yeah. And I see so many times with women who want they want they want the results, want but they're the results. not really. And it's not even that they might be lazy. It's just mm. they're just they've just been led down this path, like mm. we were discussing earlier, of isolation mm. for glutes mm. and whole glute day, mm. and they get, they don't know how to squat. Mm. They literally don't know how to mm. put a bar where. I suppose that's why I've, I've developed this warrior page as well because there are so many girls out there that actually do train like warriors and I feel like the more we promote these women the more that other women look at this and they're like that can oh, be the standard, this girl yeah. trains like a beast oh, I'm gonna start training like that and then everything's gonna yeah. just come into effect yeah that's cool you know um, so. just just outside the fitness industry yeah, at the moment. I think a lot of that we can save for next time this, oh really this, yeah I'll yeah. come back I'll come back no, I'll talk about heaps to talk about okay. I'll, I've got other stuff too but let's okay. do a, a whole another podcast alright yeah done I just want to say um, Nipsey Hussle rest in peace a rapper, you Snoop Dogg's cousin, Nipsey oh, Hussle. He's a, a shot. an LA rapper. He oh, got shot in the field. I was gonna have a whole discussion with you about it, but you don't know who he is. <laughs> nah, so. that's fucking yeah, outrageous. We'll we'll um, okay. Anything else you want to cover? I think that no, no. This is if there's anything else related to Ray is yeah. is, is worth covering. But um, anything you want to talk else you want to cover? I think I've spoken a lot. I mean, whatever comes up in the future. Yeah. Let, and what's the best be. the best place to let's say so let's say there is a girl who's, who's been training has is really you know. Um, wanting to take it to the next level, or or just need some need some questions. Just advice. reach out, man. I, yeah. I, I, Slide into your DMs. Yeah, man. I am so I'm an open book. A lot of people I've contacted athletes in the past. I've never got a response. This is when I first started in the industry. I used right. to reach out and be like, "Oh, what do I do?" and try and get advice and stuff like that. I've had some pretty cool women around me that have been some pretty cool mentors. Like I remember names? Rose Black. Okay, was a really cool influence on me. Yeah. Um, just one the others. Yeah, yes. she just won yeah. her pro card, yeah. so I was really quite emotional for her because I was there, I was fucking in the middle screaming because yeah, I could just see she is just the one that's come back time after time, yes. getting second place, third place, second yeah. place, third place. She's never given up yeah. and she's such a beautiful person and a beautiful soul and she was so welcoming. I'll never forget when I did my first IFBB con, she was like, hey, how you doing? And she's from Dubbo too, so she's yeah, a country cool. girl. Yeah, cool. And she's got that just that country vibe and yeah. anyone that meets Rose is just blessed, so she's beautiful. Yeah, she but I want to be that... The young women, young, I think young, you and old. Already are. Yeah. yeah. I think, you know, they're already I'm a pretty really open book, man. I got who, who look up to you. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. I was actually surprised. Some people came up to me that I was like, "Ray, I follow you on Instagram." I'm like, this is cool. Like, this is yeah, nice. Yeah, my my partner Jade. Yeah. Do you know who she is? I don't know. Probably by face. I'm she no, she um name. she was the the managing hairdresser at. Um, yeah. Hair House Warehouse Miranda. Okay. You used to go there and buy stuff. Okay. From the hair house. Yeah, you probably. Remember? Yeah. Remember doing yeah. That? Well, she knows who you are. Oh, really? Yeah, and other women that I know know you too. I just think 
this, you know, <coughs> just be nice to people. You don't know. I wish there were people that were nice to me because there was times where I was feeling really shit, you know, and I just needed that person to be like, oh, like life's okay. Like, it's it's going to be all right. Yeah, it's going to be okay. I just want to be that person. I go through shit. A lot of my Instagram, I post about some daily stuff that I go through, like, you know, even with my relationships or, you know, going through hardships. I'm honest because I, people can look at that and relate. I remember you out. being really nice and yeah. sweet and friendly at City Gym back, back in the day. Okay. You know, there'd always be a hug and, hey, how you going? Yeah, yeah. I'd talk to you about your prep and stuff. And, yeah. It's important yeah, because people, need to, people yeah. need to show love to one another. I think it's just about respect and a lot of people think that they need to put on this big front. Yes. And I'm like, I'm like shit. why? Like, shit. Especially when we're in a, we're in a niche, <coughs> we're in a niche industry. Yeah. Let's all be um, nice to one another and People think we're weird anyway. Because so, yeah. you know, yeah. I'm People think we're weird that's anyway. That's it. That's it. hundred <laughs> percent. But I'm not, I'm not in competition with anyone else. I don't right. give a fuck. Yeah. I just give a fuck about me. Yeah. Really. At the end mm-hmm. of the day, I'm happy to help people, but I'm not looking left and right and see what Susie and Joe are doing. Comparing. I don't give a shit. You know? I think a lot of people need to go within and and, and do that and practice that more internally, as, except from looking at external validation. Oh, totally. Yeah. So everyone needs to do that. Yeah. So That's why this, this mindfulness and this yoga stuff and this qigong stuff eventually with the girls is what i want to get going because if everyone feels happy with them they're happier people happier people happier vibe happier world you know uh, i think <laughs> on that note we should call it a all right what a great thank, chat thank, thank you. you thank, thank you. you for coming thank you <laughs> thanks uh, all right it's been a good thank talk you. so that was episode 26 26 and i'm steve machine Curran. Kevin Big Daddy Ord with our special guest, Riri, the Valkyrie. We'll see you. Peace out. Thanks, guys. Bye.